Okay, hi folks, Roger Quinn here, and this is going to be a quick demonstration, hopefully quick and painless, of how to make this, okay, that fabulous looking animated GIF. Let me enlarge that for you so that you can see how tremendous it is. Isn't that great? Okay, not sure if you're going to be seeing the full frame rate in the playback video there, but that thing is an animated GIF, and it was made in Illustrator and Photoshop, but primarily Adobe um, Fireworks CS5. CS5. It's not too hard to do, and I will show you how to do that right in Illustrator. Nothing particularly mysterious about the way that was drawn. They're all vectors. I've set up my document size to be the actual size that I want in my web banner, which just so happens to be uh, go to the artboard. Okay, it's a pixel measurement and I'm 640 by 120 pixels wide. This is very important that we're working in pixels, we're not talking about working in the world of print. That's what I've done there. And the layers are also a fairly critical thing. Why that is, is because I eventually want to be able to turn on these different layers one at a time in order to make my animation. And so it just makes it easier to set up each of the separate graphics on a separate layer. So that's all I'm doing there is just turning those layers on and off. Okay, so I didn't do anything particularly tricky to create that, so I'll move on now from Illustrator okay, to Photoshop. So what I did is I exported this, not saved, but exported from Illustrator as a PSD file. Okay, I'll just call this number two. Let it replace, because no, it didn't, doesn't matter. And this is the critical thing here is I've got right layers turned on, okay, because I want those layers to go across into Photoshop as they are. I don't want it to flatten. The other thing that's really important to do is remember to turn it back to 72 pixels per inch because we're working with screen resolution, again, not print resolution. The other thing too that I haven't mentioned here, I've done it automatically, is I'm working in RGB. Okay, we don't need to be in CMYK mode because again, we're working with screen stuff, not print. Um, sorry to sound patronizing there, but it's because the defaults will sometimes open with CMYK and you have to remember that this stuff is for screen display, so change it to RGB in your color mode. And this is actually one I created earlier. And the difference is I've added one layer in Photoshop. Okay, and what I did was I've duplicated the logo layer, so the logo is separate to the background. So I duplicated that and I simply added a, an outer glow in Photoshop. Yes, I could have done that back in uh, Illustrator. I personally prefer to do pixel effects in a pixel program, such as Photoshop. It does it better. Anyway. So that's the only addition I've made there. All right, good opportunity once again when you're in Photoshop just to double check the sizes you're working with. So once again, our document size is most definitely 640 by 120. I'm using that measurement because it's a generic average size for a web banner. And I'm most definitely working at 72 pixels per inch, not per centimeter. Pixels per inch is good. Pixels per centimeter is bad. All right, moving on. And then I'm going to open that exact same file now. Okay, the PSD file in Fireworks, Adobe Fireworks CS5. Now, um, the over pedantic people at Adobe seem to want to double check everything all the time. So when you open in Fireworks, it will probably give you that window which says, are you really, really sure you want to make this 640 by 120 by 72? And yes, I'm really sure. It's doing that because you may be bringing graphics from another program and you may need to change that. But in this case, our workflow has been right from the start, so we know that measurement is correct. Right here, and here we go. Now, I'm just going to change my palettes back to hopefully what the default layout will be when you open the program, which I hope is that. If it's not, go to Window. Workspace Layouts Expanded Mode. Okay, and you should get exactly the same as what I'm seeing there. Now, what you'll see there should be very similar to Photoshop. Uh, a lot of the tools are similar. 
uh, fortunately we won't really need to use any of them much um, and the layer palette will look similar the difference is they've introduced another sub layer there called web layer and then layer but we do need these layers and you can see that they turn on and off exactly the same way as they did in Photoshop this will become very important in a minute when we want to start making our animation first of all though can I show you the optimize menu it's up in the tab on this right hand side menu and it's very important and it's important to click on this from the start because then you'll make sure that your workflow is going to uh, be correct and it will actually work as an animated GIF all right what I'm talking about there is this program fireworks is designed specifically just to make graphics to display on the web so the choices of file export it gives you are simply designed to do that you'll notice that it doesn't give you options for all the other things that you can create the three biggies are GIFs, animated GIFs and JPEGs there's also PNGs which are also a popular file type now for web graphics but the one we want to use is in fact an animated GIF now this is important to do because if you just leave it on GIF it won't export as an animation it will only export the first frame that's not so good so change it to animated GIF now just whilst we're on that uh, let's have a look at what that's actually talking about the idea of any web graphic is to try and make sure it's as uh, optimal as you possibly can make it that is it's as small a file size as you can get away with without losing the quality of your graphic the reason for that is so that the graphics will transfer quickly and efficiently across the network the default in this program is to work with uh, the full GIF palette which is 256 possible colors now depending on the graphic that you create you might find that you can change that and reduce your file size that's a good thing to do and to test that if you go up to the preview button which is in the top left hand corner of your window you'll actually see that in action so it shows you there the 256 colors and I've got that set to a, an adaptive palette Okay, which means it's going to find the closest 256 colors to use. If I change that down from 256 to 128, okay, you can see that it's halving the number of colors, and on screen it doesn't look that different, so we'd still get away with that. I'll jump now down to say 16. Now on screen, you won't probably see this on the on this small video screen, but on my screen here, I can see that that's really reduced the quality of the outer glow it looks very jaggy that means I need more colors than this 16 color palette to show that properly the difference can be seen actually down in the bottom left hand corner of our window that's actually telling me how big that file is going to be as a file size okay it's 10.74 kilobytes which is not too bad if I had that back on 256 colors it's jumping up to 11.51 big deal you may say it's one kilobyte difference well when that's transferring across a network it can make a difference okay and ideally what you want to do is have your graphic appearing as quickly as it possibly can without delay on a website so a smaller file size even if it is only one kilobyte is worth worrying about okay so I'll turn that back down to I've got on 32 at the moment that's jumped down to 8 kilobytes so maybe I will run with 32 and we'll just see how that goes the transition around that logo there doesn't look too bad uh, so we'll probably get away with it okay the first thing we need is we need our states menu okay it's down once again in the right hand side here next to pages and next to layers now I think it's actually a lot easier if you separate that little um, menu from your layers menu so I'm just going to click the tab and drag it over here and that way I can see that separately to my layers which I'm just going to try and make a bit more visible down here okay and states in the states menu here it's probably easier to think about this if you think of those as frames okay because what we're creating here is an animation it's going to be a frame by frame animation pretty much a good old-fashioned method of doing this at the moment we only have one state which means we would have a one frame animation pretty boring so what we need to do is introduce some new frames or states okay and I shall do that from the states menu I'll go to the little drop down at the side of that and I could add states what that will do is add a whole bunch of blank frames but it's actually going to be easier to duplicate 
because what we want to do is we want to keep working with some of the same graphics. So I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to tell it that I want approximately seven frames or states. And I'm going to tell it to do it on the default, which is after the current state. So it's going to put seven copies of that after itself. Now it may come up blank at first, don't worry about that. It will catch up in a minute. There we go. And there's eight states or eight frames if you like. And what we do is it's a matter of controlling which layers you've got turned on or off in any of the states. Okay. So what we might do is I'll have frame one or state one where everything is turned on. Okay, all the graphics are, are visible, so I've got all my layers turned on. I'm going to go to state two. I'm going to now convert that to only showing perhaps just the background. So I'm going to turn all of this stuff off. Okay, so I've turned off all my layers other than my orange background in state two. I shall now tempt fate and go to state three and gradually turn on uh, more layers. Okay, so I'll just begin that by turning everything off that I don't want. Okay, and I'm just going to turn on the background and that first star. Okay, so starburst and background because in, in mine I actually name the layers. So we'll just double check quickly what I've done there. So if I go back to my states menu, I can click on state one and there's all that turned on. State two, nothing turned on. State three, I've got my starburst turned on. And so you basically keep doing that until you get the order um, of graphics appearing uh, that you're after for each of the frames or states. So I'll just keep running through that until it's finished. Probably easier now to just turn the things off one by one until I get it. State 8, I'm actually going to turn the glow off. Okay, so that in state 1 it turns it back on, and what that effectively will do is give me the effect of that flashing. All right, let's just see how that looks and the way to play that. Down the bottom of your window, you'll see there's actually a little play and rewind and etc. button. So just hit the play and you can see what it's doing. Now incidentally, the speed at which that's playing can be controlled to some extent okay, by this little properties uh, menu that I brought up. I did that quickly then, so where that was in the states menu, a little drop down at the side, there's a properties box. And that allows me to change the delay of each frame. Okay, It's going by per hundredths of a second, so the default is seven one hundredths of a second. That'll do for the moment. If you wanted your animation to play slower, obviously you could increase that number. If you want to play faster, you could reduce it. One thing to bear in mind is that some browsers tend to ignore that. Okay, they don't actually interpret that speed information very well. So, right up. And down the bottom of our states menu too is a couple of things worth looking at. Um, this controls uh, how the animation is going to loop, which means do you want it to play endlessly or do you want it just to animate through that cycle a few times. Most animated GIFs are probably going to be looping forever, okay, which is why the default settings on forever. However, you can specify a certain number of repetitions just here if you want. Again, now what we need to do is export it so we can use it. And you do that um, mysteriously by going to File, Export. And uh, again, just use sensible file naming. Uh, so I'm going to export this. You'll see here there's lots of options. What we're doing here is we're just making an image. We're not making HTML or anything else. So leaving it on default of images only is fine. And that's pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to export that. And then we'll just go and have a look at whether that worked. What we do is open that in a browser. And there it is. Working beautifully. Okay, uh, just remember you probably do need to test that in a browser, not in preview or some other program, because it may not show you how it's really going to behave in an actual web browser. So that's why it's a good idea, logically, to test that in a web browser. Okay, there you go. Not too difficult to do, fairly straightforward. The only hard part is keeping an eye on the management of those layers and the states. Okay, good luck and have fun.